Fellows on to kick a 48-yard field goal. It's up, and it is no good. It's short to go. Penn State trying to widen the gap as McCarty hands it off for Brian Butler. Touchdown, Penn State. And now they're going to need the onside kick. This is it. The onside kick. If Wesley gets it, it's game over. And it's doubled, and Penn State recovers. Oh, my word. First and goal is McCarty. He will find his man, John Washington. And assuming the Nittany Lions make the extra point, extra point, which obviously didn't really matter, as Champ Britton up the middle for Lemieux. Hornets are awfully close to field goal range. Westlake just called their last time out. They're going to go for the touchdown now, which is certainly risky. As Britton, incomplete. It's actually going to be a real fumble. Underwood picks it up. The clock will tick. And for whatever reason, I don't know why Coach Conway did not go for the field goal there, but I think that means OT. What a down, I guess, to potentially end the game quicker as McCarty on the option. McCarty keeps it. Now he tosses it for Pettit. Pettit will take it the distance for a Penn State touchdown. Let's see if they can convert the two points. Westlake's defense absolutely needs to stop. They don't want to be down eight when they get the ball. Let's see if they can do it. This is an absolutely huge play. McCarty looking to throw it under pressure over to Wilson, and he gets the one. Britton hands it off for Ellis. He gets the touchdown, and now Westlake's going to go for two. If they get it, we head to another overtime, and if they don't, Penn State are champ. This is it. Do you run it, or do you throw it? If Westlake does not convert, then... Mason Conway will always be surrounded by the fact that he made the wrong decision. And did he get in? No. They say no. Champ Britton scrambled. And it looked like the Penn State player got him. Now it's third and goal from the one. Curtis to Wiggins. Touchdown. Westlake. The dynamic duo of 24, and Army does not trust their kicker. They are gonna go for it. Murray, looking to throw it, going up the middle for Hall, and that's a touchdown! Just in goal, eight seconds left, Westlake down in their last time out of the half. Curtis, scrambling, gonna look for Nigel Wiggins, and it's caught! Tippy toe grab for Wiggins! You see number 39, Jason Gibbs, is back in the ball game. Here is Curtis, gonna take a shot deep for Nigel Wiggins! And he gets it inside the five. And this is a high re-injury risk, but he is back in. Number 13 on the left side of your screen. Curtis, looking for Wiggins, that's a touchdown! Tying the school record. This is it, a certain Nigel Wiggins is in the game, by the way, on the Hail Mary. Smith. Gonna heave it deep, and it's picked, not by Wiggins or any of the seniors, by Anthony Mitchell, the freshman. And that's how this game will end. And for the first time in school history, the West Lake Hornets are national champions. Ten Welcome back, everybody, to the West Lake Hornets Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. As today, the national championship is here in season number 11 as the Wesley Hornets try to make it two in a row. They take on the Tennessee Volunteers. Unlike last year's national championship run, this Westlake team had to face a ton of adversity, losing probably their most dominant senior class in school history. Westlake was probably on paper a little bit worse than they were a season ago. They did not have a set starting quarterback for most of the season, and even took a loss in the middle of the season to the Utah Utes. But Westlake rallied around sophomore quarterback Stephen Westwood, and here they are now trying to defend their throne and take home their second straight national championship. The opponent today is the number one ranked Tennessee Volunteers. They just smothered Auburn in the SEC championship 38-6, to and for what it's worth, Auburn was the number one ranked team in the country going into that game. Tennessee has not lost this season. They are led by their dominant defense, who is easily the best defense in college football, led by defensive-minded head coach Sizeteek Youngblood. You might recognize that name. Youngblood was Westlake's defensive coordinator for the first five seasons 
of the series and then after season five became the head coach at his alma mater, the University of Tennessee. Welcome everybody to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome here in, would this be the Saints Stadium or the Falcons? I don't, I don't know. As the number two ranked, Westlake Hornets take on the number one ranked Tennessee Volunteers for the national championship. Tails never fails, the Hornets win the toss and will send their defense out first. Here is the Tennessee offense led by senior quarterback Derek Jefferson, one of the top QBs in the nation. Second and ten, Jefferson going to get it over to Williams. Andy Pino makes a bad play and that'll be Chad Williams for a gain of 17. It's been no secret that Andy Pino has been fairly disappointing this season. Not a great start to his national championship. Here's Eric Stanley now. Nice first down, but he gets pounded by the junior linebacker, Lewis Kahn. Last year in the national championship, Army only scored seven points against Westlake, but the Hornets defense last year had guys like Cole Spencer and Josh Wilson who weren't here anymore, and obviously this defense has been way worse. Third and nine, the pass is broken up by Anthony Mitchell. Jefferson was nearly sacked, and now what do they do on fourth down? Fourth down from the 33, you can go for it, you can take the 50-yard field goal, but Tennessee's going to punt it. I don't agree with this call. They're actually going through with it, too. That is a weird call, to say the least, but Westlake will get the ball unharmed. I would not have punted it there, personally. Here's the Westlake offense, led by sophomore quarterback Stephen Westwood. Let's see if he has what it takes to continue this hot streak and lead his team to their second straight national championship victory. Westwood going to open up the game with a run. Here is Stephen Westwood. Going to gain 15 yards. Good start to the possession. Tennessee's first drive ended with a punt. Let's see if Westlake will follow suit or if they can convert here on third and seven. Westwood is joined in the backfield by junior running back Tim Beck. Stephen Westwood going to scramble to his left. Westwood, hit as he throws, connects with the junior, Ulri Ayaluko for a first down. Nice conversion by Westlake. They are now past midfield as it's first down. We've hit the 420 mark in the first quarter. 420 plays it as it's a handoff for John Cummings. Cummings has a block. Here goes Cummings, breaks a tackle, and gets 20 before being brought down at the 30. John Cummings was a big play machine towards the beginning of the season. Really quieted down as... The season went along, but very nice run for the freshman. Westlake's offense is starting to get on a little bit of a groove here. Jason Gibbs, the senior, is now in the backfield with Stephen Westwood. As Stephen, under pressure, nice block from Gibbs. It's a fumble. It is going to be recovered by the left tackle, Josh McClelland. But that's still a loss of 26. It's Williams who gets the sack. Fourth down and 11, Westlake will send the field goal unit out. We know Volker Guns is not great from the hashes, so his kick is a f far from a guarantee. The 44-yard attempt is up, and it is right down the middle, and the Westlake Hornets are on the board as Volker Guns will make it 3 to nothing. Fourth and nine at your opponent's 33, and you punt it? I did not get that call at all on the previous possession from Tennessee. Let's see if they can avenge themselves. As Derek Jefferson loses five on the option. Delvin Hines brings him down. What a season it has been for Delvin Hines, one of the most dominant defensive linemen in college football. And the kid's just a redshirt sophomore. Can Westlake force Tennessee to a three and out as it is third down and seven for the Vols? Five wide set. Jefferson looking to throw it. Gets it to Weaver, who is immediately brought down by Anthony Mitchell. That's a three and out. Westlake gets the ball back. Let's see if Westlake can really capitalize on some momentum after forcing that three and out. Second and four. It's going to be an option, and it is thrown right into the hands of Williams. We know Westlake sucks on these option plays. I don't know why they keep running them, but once again, they fail on the option toss. Brandon Williams with the touchdown, and Tennessee will take the lead. Someone needs to... Tell Mason Conway to not run that pass. Cool mascot, by the way. Westlake was really looking good early, and then that fumble really changes the perplexion of this football game. And all the Westlake momentum has now been flushed down the toilet. Second and two, Steven going to look for his younger brother, Carter. 
as the true freshman makes his first catch of the day, and that'll be a first down. Quarter number one in the books, and I think it's safe to say that Westlake has been the better football team today, but Tennessee has more points on the scoreboard. Carter Westwood in motion. Dear God, it's another option pitch. Westwood does not toss it, and that proves to be good. Stephen Westwood down the field. What a run inside the 10. Stephen needs to trust himself a little bit more on these options, and this time it works. Carter Westwood, who he could have pitched it to, was smothered. So Westwood said, shoot, I'm going to run up this open hole. That's what he said. Nice run by Stephen Westwood. Let's see if Wesley can take the lead now at the goal line. First down. Westwood looking for the end zone, and it's caught by Ulri Ayoluko for the touchdown, and Westlake is back on top. Derek Jefferson is 6 for 9. Very nice. Here's Eric Stanley. Gets past Marcus Lee for a gain of 17. Tennessee's offense is slowly but surely moving the ball down the field fairly nicely on this drive. Hey, Stephen Westwood, that is how you do the option toss. Tennessee's offense is moving, and it looks like they won't have to punt it on this drive, most likely, as it's going to be an option. Jefferson fools Delvin Hines inside the 10 for a gain of 10. The Bulls haven't really thrown the ball on this drive, and it's working. Third and goal at the 1. Can Tennessee punch an in, or does Westlake get the stop? Lewis Kahn with an incredible play. Derek Jefferson is unable to do anything. Kahn immediately swarms the backfield. That'll force a field goal. A chip shot to tie it. Let's see if this kicker will make it. As it unsurprisingly looks good, and it is good. And we are tied at 10 now with 3 minutes and 18 seconds left here in the first half of the national championship. Now that this game is tied at 10, let's see if Westlake can answer. Second and two. Handoff for Jason Gibbs. I think that might be his first carry of the game. And he loses three. Brandon Williams, who's been all over the field today, makes the tackle. After the tackle for a loss by Williams, it's now third and five. Westwood going to scramble to his right. He's going to try to run for the first down, and he is successful. Nice play by Stevie. Westlake is already over the 100 rushing yards mark today. Westlake has ran the ball really well today, but let's see if they can start to pass the ball a little bit better. The passing game has been fairly lackluster for the most part. Steven Westwood gonna look for his younger brother, Carter Westwood, for a nice gain of 20. That's the play the Hornets needed to really start to get into a groove offensively. Nice play right there from the Westwood connection, now at the 46. Steven, Hit as he throws, he will get it to Noah Newton. That could have very easily been a sack, but instead the senior wideout out of Edmonton, Canada, Canada, will get 22. I'm, I'm sorry for the Canadian accent uh, attempt. Third and nine with a minute and change left to go here in the first half. This is a really big play here for Westlake to see if they can try to make it a seven-point lead going into halftime or if they're going to have to settle for a field goal. Steven Westwood, going to go deep for Carter Westwood. That's a touchdown. Westwood makes an excellent cut on his route. Steven is 6 for 9 now. Nice. And the Hornets are back on top. You really thought Volker Gantz was going to go a game without missing a kick? You're wrong. He missed the PAT, and it is still 16 to 10. We'll see if that missed extra point from Volker Gantz comes back to bite Westlake in the butt. Anyway, all eyes are on the Tennessee offense. Third and two. Jefferson keeps it on the option. My goodness, Lewis Kahn might have ended his career, but he got the first down, so who cares? Nice conversion by Tennessee. About 30 seconds to go in the half. Jefferson has time, and he's going to get intercepted. Lewis Kahn makes another play, and Westlake has an opportunity to make it a two-score game before halftime. Lewis Kahn has been an animal. So far in this football game, he might be the MVP of his team throughout this first half so far. As Steven Westwood on first down, going to scramble, going to go deep for Frank Bray, who gets it inside the 15. Remember, the Hornets start the second half on offense. They, are, they have a chance to be up by two possessions going into the locker room, which is a very big deal. Westwood. He doesn't know what to do with it. He's going to be sacked for a loss of three, and we'll likely see the field goal unit come out. It's Antoine Rodgers with the play. 
Third and one, four seconds left in the half. Westlake will send the field goal unit out. Volker Gantz, we know he struggles from the hashes. This is a chip shot for most, but not for him. The kick is good. So Volker Gantz is now two for two on field goals and one for two on extra points. And it is now 19 to 10. One half down, one to go, and it's for Westlake Hornets who lead this game. 19 to 10, they do start out on offense. Handoff for John Cummings. Cummings gets by a pair of defenders. Welcome to the second half. Gain of 24 for John Cummings, who has played a very nice game today. No pun intended, because he has 69 yards. I didn't even mean for the for a nice joke to come in there, but shoot, okay. Gotta keep your eye on that clock. There's still plenty of time, but we're in the second half, and it gets to that point in the game where eventually there's going to be less time than you think. Here's Bray with a nice gain of 16. Westlake's offense looking good so far. The Hornets are now nearing the red zone. Tim Beck is in the backfield, and it is an option. Steven Westwood keeps it. Westwood runs past the defender, and he's gone in open space. 23-yard score for Steven Westwood, and the Hornets now have a very comfortable lead. Westlake is definitely in the driver's seat right now, but we've seen them choke worse in the past. Season 6 National Championship, they were up 31-17 to with two minutes to go and still found a way to lose. Well, plays like this help. Derek Jefferson only gets one on third down. It's Marcus Lee with the play. Westlake is a touchdown away from making this game ugly. Tennessee needs a stop on this drive. They need it. Handoff for John Cummings. Cummings runs through a man and gets 19. John Cummings has been a beast in this football game today. He's been a problem for Tennessee's defense. Third down and eight. Boy, would this be a massive stop for Tennessee's defense. Let's see if they can get it. Westwood scrambling with it. Westwood can't really find anyone open. Doesn't know what to do with it. Now we're going to go deep for an open man. Ulri Iluko finds a way to get away from the commotion and gains 41. Westlake wide receiver Carter Westwood was seen limping off the field. If he's out for the rest of this game, that could be a pretty big deal. Second and three. Westwood scrambling. Can't find anyone. So now he's going to look for Cummings, and it's picked off by Frazier. Tennessee is not out of this game, ladies and gentlemen. They're not quite out of it. As you can see on the graphic, star wide receiver Carter Westwood has strained his Achilles. His day and his freshman season are now over. Hornets are going to have to win this one without him. Second and 11, Derek Jefferson is sacked by the senior Marcus Shelton in his final collegiate game. Makes a very nice play there, and now it is third and long. This play is really, really important. Third and 15, Jefferson going to look to throw. And under pressure now, it's Octavius October with the sack, and Tennessee will likely have to punt it to open up quarter number four. If Westlake scores on this possession, I think it's safe to say this one is over. Westwood on second and two, going up the middle. It's caught by Curtis Vincent. That's a gain of 21. And Tennessee's chances are starting to look less and less likely as this clock continues to tick onwards. Third and goal at the two, under four minutes to play. Tennessee is hanging on for dear life right now. Westwood looking, and it is incomplete, so we'll likely have to see the field goal unit come out. This kick is pretty much the equivalent to an extra point. Volker Guns has missed an extra point today. However, he does not miss this one. An absolute beauty. And now it is 29-10 with 3.50 to play. Tennessee needs three touchdowns in about three minutes. But to be fair, we have seen worse chokes by Westlake in the national championship before, so I suppose it's possible. Screen for Stanley. He is smothered in the backfield by Anthony Mitchell. That's a loss of four. And now it is third down and 13. For Tennessee under three minutes to play. Jefferson gonna look to throw it under pressure from Khan. You yeet, you lose. It's picked off by Marcus Jones, who just jumps on top of Richard Richards. But hey, still a nice turnover nonetheless. And now, okay, what the hell is that animation? 
And now, I mean, there's virtually no chance for Tennessee to win this game. Tennessee ain't even calling their timeouts. Third and eight, a first down ends it. Westwood scrambling, gets it to Bray, and I think it's safe to say that's your ball game, folks. Westlake is in victory formation. Steven Westwood is on for the kneel down, and for the second straight season, the national championship has been won by your West Lake Hornets, as this one is over, and the Hornets have done it. 29 to 10 is your final, and the Westlake Hornets are now back-to-back -back national champions. This has been a hard-fought game since the start, but I think it's been quite apparent who the better team has been throughout. Who is the MVP of the game? Is it Steven Westwood? I think Steven Westwood certainly makes a case. He did have a few mistakes, the interception, the fumble, running the ball. John Cummings was awesome. Westwood with a nice average. Kind of disappointed how Jason Gibbs played, though. Receiving. Aurea Yaluko was very good. Carter Westwood was very good. Frank Bray with a nice amount of receiving yards. The offensive line was outstanding. Defensively, the team was great. Lewis Kahn, I think makes a quiet case for the game MVP. He was electric, especially in the first half, maybe not as much in the second half. Only two sacks, Shelton and October, the kicking. Hey, Volker Gantz went three for three on field goals. He did miss two extra points, though. Westlake did not punt once. That's insane. They didn't have to punt at all today. That's crazy. To be fair, the Hornet did score a lot of field goals. Derek Jefferson was very underwhelming in this game as we briefly look at the Tennessee stats. Outside of Eric Stanley, the wide receivers for Tennessee combined for six catches for a grand total of 43 yards. That's not too good. So uh, what is the future of this series going forward? So we're not going to have a 30 for 30 like we did last year, mainly because uh, I want to keep the series moving quickly. I think I have a plan for how much longer I want to go with this series. Obviously, it can't go on forever. Uh, but it's not over. The Westlake Dynasty is not done yet. It has not fully run its course, in my opinion. We still have a few more things to see with this team. We still have a few more years to go. So, the Westlake Dynasty is not quite over. Next episode will be the Season 11 offseason. And then we will advance to Season 12. Hope you guys enjoyed Back-to-back -back champs, baby. Let's go.